So, so far we've dealt with radical expressions. We were just required to simplify, get it in a nicer form. We didn't have to solve for anything because we didn't have an equal sign, but now we're going to be introducing that. So, we have these radical equations we need to be able to solve. So, the part that makes it radical is that we have variables underneath the root. Our radicand has a variable, and first we have to dig those out from underneath the root in order to solve those equations. And in order to get there, we're going to use this principle of squaring. So what it says, if I have two things that are equal to each other, and it's true, if I square both sides in this equation, the result is still true. So if I have an equality, square both sides, still true. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So we're going to use that to start to solve a few radical equations. So the very first square root of 2x minus 4 is equal to 7. Now the very first thing we always want to do with these problems is isolate the radicals. Isolate the radical. So what does that mean? If I only have one radical, I need to get that thing on its own. If I have two, I need to split them up and have them on either side of the equal sign. So I only have one. I need to get this thing on its own. So negative 4 has to move to the other side. So when we add him, I'm looking at root 2x is equal to 11. And now I have that set up, one thing equal to another. I can square both sides, and the result is still going to be true. So if I square on the left, I have to square on the right. And what comes out of my left-hand term? So my square is undoing that root. I'm just left with the insides, and 11 squared is 121. So now that we got rid of those radicals, we can solve that really easily. It's linear, we just have to divide by 2. So my x value that makes that equation true is 121 over 2. And as always with these kinds of equations, we want to check in the end, make sure that our solution actually holds true. So let's check real quick. I think that my x value is 121 over 2. So let's plug that in to our original equation, and we'll see if it's true. So on the inside of the radical, what's happening? Those 2's are canceling, and I'm looking at the square root of 121, which is 11. If I have 11 and I take away 4, is it equal to 7? Yeah, check was pretty straightforward and quick there. Not always going to be the case, but we do want to perform a check. So in the very end, my solution set in this case is 121 over 2. That is the only value that we can plug in and make that radical equation true. So let's look at another one. In the next example, I have two radicals. One on the left, one on the right. So whenever we have two, we just want to have them split up. So I have one on the left-hand side of the equation, one on the right. That counts as being isolated. If there's one, we need it on its own. If there's two, we just need to split them up. And since I have that equality, we can go ahead and square both sides, and it's still going to be true. But what do we have to remember in this piece? When I'm squaring a product of two things, I have to distribute it first to 2, and then to my radical. So I'm undoing the root. I'm just left with the insides there. So we have to be careful. We have to remember all of those rules from working with exponents. And on the right, what evaluates out of this term? Again, my square is undoing the root, so I'm just left with the insides. Once we get there, it's pretty straightforward. We know how to solve these. It's just taking care of the radicals in the beginning. So let's go ahead and evaluate. I've got 4 times x plus 2 gives me x plus 10. We need x on its own. So i got to distribute the 4 and get my x's together. So I'm going to subtract x. I've got 3 over here. Next, 8 has to move. I've got 3x is equal to 2. We need x on its own, so x is 2 thirds.
proposed solution, but in the end, we always want to check to make sure. So I'm going to come over here. Hopefully it'll fit. And let's check. Not going to be as nice or as quick as our last version, but that's okay. We still need to perform this. And it's extra practice with evaluating radicals. So into the very original, I've got 2 times the square root of 2 thirds plus 2 is equal to the square root of 2 thirds plus 10. All right. So on the inside, we need to combine these like terms. But in order to do that, we need common denominators. So each of our other factors are missing threes down below. So we multiply by 3 over 3. So I'm looking at 2 times the square root of what? I've got 6, 7, 8 thirds. And that's equal to, we're trying to figure out if it's equal to, the square root of what? So I've got 32 thirds. Simplify them down and see if it actually comes out to be true. So how can we break down 8 thirds? Okay, the thirds part isn't a perfect square, but 8 has a perfect square living in it of 4. So evaluating out of there is 2. 2 times 2 will give me 4, and left over on the inside, I've got 2 thirds. So if anything is going to be evaluating out of here, I need it to be a factor of 4 coming out. So can we break up 32 into perfect square and 2? 16 and 2. So yes, they are going to be equal. I've got 4 square roots of 2 thirds is equal to 4 square roots of 2 thirds. So in that case, it's a little bit more work to check, but we did get there. Solution set is true. We can plug in 2 thirds and make it happen. So on the next page, go ahead and take that radical equation, solve, and check your solution. All right, first one for you. Very first thing to do is get that radical on its own. So negative 5 has to move to the other side. So we're looking at root 3x is equal to 8. Now that we have that equality, one radical equal to something else, we can square both sides. And it still will be true. On the left-hand side, evaluating out, we get 3x. We're undoing the radical. 8 times 8 is 64. To get x on its own, we had to divide by 3. And 64 thirds doesn't evaluate down any nicer, but we want to check in the original, make sure that this is true. So in the beginning, I've got the root 3 times 64 thirds minus 5. Is that really equal to 3? So let's see. On the inside, 3 over 3 is 1. Square root of 64 is 8. 5, 8, and take away 5, is that equal to 3? Sure is. So our solution set in that case is 6 to 4 thirds. The things we can plug in to make our equation true. And now we're finally going to have a conversation about why we need to check every single um, possible solution. So we have this example. In the very beginning, this first one, how many solutions do I have to that equation? 1. My only option is x is equal to 1. Pretty straightforward. We've got one solution, and it is 1. And if I take that and square both sides, I get this second equation here. So squaring both sides, the result is still going to be true. But notice what happens now. How many solutions do I have to that equation? Two, both a positive and a negative one. I've got two solutions. Two solutions. One and a negative one. But if I check that back into my original that I was dealing with, are both of those going to hold true in the original? So if I plug in one, it's going to be satisfied. But if I plug in negative one, is that going to be true? No. So when we square both sides, we may be introducing another option that isn't going to work in our original equation. So I need to check every single solution. So we're going to practice some more and get into that habit, and we're going to start here. So first step of these, 
get the radical on its own. It already is, which is great. So we can square both sides. Still going to be true. And what do we get over here on the left? We can't distribute the square over the difference. So this is x minus 5 times x minus 5. We can use our little cheat to evaluate. I get the first thing squared, last thing squared, and 2 times the first times the second. So I've got negative 10x coming out there. So this is going to be the biggest mistake that you make. We have to either FOIL or use the little cheat to FOIL it out quickly. We can't distribute over that difference. But on the right-hand side, what comes out of there? I'm undoing the root. I'm just left with the insides. So before in all the cases that we solved, the highest power on x that we saw was 1. It was linear. We know how to solve. Now we're looking at quadratics, highest power 2. So how do we solve these things? Think back to the last chapter that we worked on. We need everything on one side, having it set equal to 0. Then we can solve. So if we get our terms all on the left-hand side. I'm subtracting x, so that'll give me negative 11 over here. And 25 minus 7 will give me 18, all equal to 0. And we need our quadratic term to be positive, so we moved these two to the left. So now we have to try to factor that thing. So I've got a 1 out on the front. No, it will be an x and an x. And what about my signs? I need it to add to be negative, multiply to be positive. So that tells me both of these need to be negative. And what factors of 18 will multiply there, add to negative 11? What do we need? 9 and 2. And again, what happens with these? Two chunks being multiplied equal to 0. Either the first one is equal to 0 which will give me out the value 9. Or what else? From my second piece, x could be equal to 2. So these are our proposed solutions, but we may have introduced some problem children when we we're uh, squaring both sides. So we need to check in the original, make sure that these work. So the first one that I'm going to check is 9 because it's first in the list. So 9 minus 5, is that really equal to the square root of 9 plus 7? So over here I've got 4, is that equal to the square root of 16? Yep, that one sure is. So 9 works for us. Put a box around him so I don't forget. But we also need to check 2. So 2 minus 5 is that equal to the square root of 2 plus 7? So on the left-hand side, I get out negative 3. And on the right-hand side, I've got the square root of 9. And I'm looking for the principal root. So is that one true? Those aren't equal to each other. So what does that tell me about 2? That one's out. Not going to work. So my solution set in that case is only containing... 9. You always have to check every single solution. So go ahead and take that next one. Solve it for x. Check all of your answers. So in the very beginning, the radical is already isolated. First step to do, square both sides. We need to dig that variable out of the radical. So over here, we can't distribute the square over the subtraction. We have to FOIL it out. Or here's our little trick. So we get out the first thing squared, the last thing squared, 2 times the first times the second. And that is equal to x plus 5, undoing the radical with that square, just left with the insides. So what to move? Right to left or left to right? We want to move these two because this is already positive. We want to keep that. So moving both of these over to the left, I've got x squared. Minus 3x is e minus 4 is equal to 0. So we want to try to factor. And I have a 1 out on the front. I know it's going to be an x and an x. And what about my signs? Adding to a negative, 
multiplying to a negative. So I've got one positive, one negative. And what combo of four, four is factors, will give me negative three when I add them. Negative four, positive one. So two things being multiplied equal to zero. Either the first piece is equal to zero, and we get out negative one, or the second piece is equal to zero, and we get out positive four. But we need to check every single proposed solution. So let's see. When I plug in negative one, since it's first, I get negative one minus one. Is that equal to negative one plus five? So negative two is what evaluates on the left. Is that equal to the square root of four? No. So that one's out. We still need to check the other one because there might not be any solutions. But let's see. Four minus one, is that equal to the square root of four plus five? So I've got three on the left is equal to square root of nine. Yep, that one's true. So our solution set in that case just contains four. We can't plug in negative one. Doesn't come out to be true.